It may not be obvious when you sign up for a PhD, but when you are getting your training as PhD, you are being trained as a professional writer. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time, your online community for motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. If you are not feeling motivated in the last month being home and trying to write, this is the video for you because it will clarify why you should get up in the morning and do your writing. Why should we write scientific writing? Science is only developed by this concise, informative writing that are highly technical and really professionally written. And this is still by far the gold standard and the building blocks of knowledge. The reason is this is the best way that we can efficiently put a lot of information in a small piece of written test. We're trying to incorporate a lot of practical information that are important for the repeatability of your work and your colleagues that is in the other side of the world is going to read it and understand how you do certain work and it's transferable to other people in a really efficient way. In the opposite of what it's like for you to read someone's post on Facebook, a scientific paper, it should be repeatable, highly informative, and it has to be peer reviewed so that other experts in the field is going to minimize your personal bias on what you have to say about that topic which is a really important process and so far it is still the best way that human can advance discoveries and knowledge. We don't do it by ourselves. We do it with the help of our colleagues and colleagues that all over the world that could be killing your work. But in a way they are helping your paper because they could give you criticism that is going to help improve the edge of knowledge. If you haven't already, you should check out this scientific illustration about what is a PhD. We are pushing the really edge of knowledge and it's, if you imagine what you've learned from the high school level is in the core of this center of the sphere. Um, the, the knowledge that you're building is at the edge of what we don't know and know as human. And your job as a researcher is to go through what we already know and what we don't know and offer your suggestion on how to fill these gaps of knowledge. Two, five, seven, From the standpoint of a PhD student, however, you know, I talk about this very philosophical view of why we publish as scientists. What is it there for you? Well, if you have a thesis to write, publications are little milestone that you can be reaching over the course of your PhD. So then you will feel a lot more accomplished in the small chunks of effort instead of one big burst of energy in four years in the end. And a lot of people get really burned out and overwhelmed by it. So having a small achievable smart goal is an important part to mitigate your stress level in PhD. And a great way to do it is to seek publications to journals that's relevant to you and write as a manuscript. You will get feedback from other scientists. And you know what? We do it for free. Reviewers don't get paid. Because of you submit that manuscript, you will gain free feedback from these people. And as, so, as soon as you submit your manuscript, you're going to learn tremendously from these people, not only from your own institution. Also, if you have personal struggles in your own program for whatever personal relationship reason, having a published work is going to protect you. Why? Because when you graduate and you defend in your thesis, it's going to make your case a lot stronger. It's like going to the court and you are the lawyer and you are prepared with all these documents. We have two or three reviewers that review each chapter of my work and they approve that and they are already published in these reputable international journals. That's going to give you a much stronger leverage to finish on time and graduate on time. That's why you must write and it's a motivation for you and it's important. 
you are young and you are building your future by working hard. And when you work hard, you got money. Paper is your academic currency. When you get published work, you're going to gain visibility by your field of researcher and you will be seen as more reputable. You may get opportunities such as collaborative funding. You may be invited to give a talk in a conference and you got to be paid to travel. You're going to also secure potential employment when you go to meet the right person at the right institute. That's the bigger picture of why um, scientists, the most value currency is publication. Beyond that, I'm sure you have already heard this in this economic system is research input like funding. Funding comes in, we work as postdoc and we think about the work and we write it as a manuscript. And the output is either your publication, your thesis, and from your advisor standpoint, number of PhD students graduated is also counted as research output. So believe it or not, it's your advisor's interest to graduate you as a PhD and they want you to be successful and you have to remember that. It may not be obvious when you sign up for a PhD, you are being trained as a professional writer. Yes, you are a writer. I am also a writer and we are advancing our skills as a writer by being a researcher. And this is a highly transferable skills and desired by so many different career paths. So this is the reason why you have to master your writing skill. It's not just the impact factor. It's not just your academic job possibility. If you're a good writer, you have opportunity to speak to the world in different way and different platform. And being free in graduate study and write is the most luxurious time that you have. It's part of your training to learn to, to overcome procrastination. What does it take for you to be a productive writer? It is part of your education beside your lab experiment. We are highly trained in this process of scientific writing to interpret scientific finding, to read highly technical information and extrapolate the most useful information and ignore all the really unhelpful, irrelevant information and make it your own writing in your own word. In the other sense, you are like a director of a movie. If you ever go to a movie, think of it like you are the director of your own writing. And whatever the frame is, like wherever they put this camera um, to show you in the movie, you have the same power as a writer and you can frame your research field by putting which information first or next and you can you can refer to other people's work as helpful unhelpful that's that's up to you when you are going through phd you have to be a very independent worker you have to be accountable for your own project and that makes you a valuable employable person in the future so no matter you're going to be working as a professor or not, you're going to earn data in interpretation skills, researching skills for finding the right information that's reliable, that is not fake news. You also have this ability to work independently and also write highly technical writing and effectively communicate massive amount of information. I hope you feel excited and creative after watching this video to be a writer. If you're writing in the midnight, it is not a problem. Ideally, I hope everyone works in normal working hours. That this is a learning cycle. You have to be accepting that you are in the middle of learning how to manage time. As long as you identify what time works the best for your creative thinking, it is okay and make sure you track your time and make sure you write with intentionality. You're not just sitting in front of your computer and not writing. So I hope that makes you feel a little better that if you got distracted by your cat and you didn't write as much as you could, I hope this video is going to remind you the reason of why you need to write. Share this video to a friend who might need this motivation and a little reminder of why we are writing and why we are doing what we do every day as a researcher. If this resonates with you, please leave me a comment. That will mean the world to me. 
Can you imagine? Most of us are writing in English, but we are not native English speaker. I like to talk about how I overcome writing、um, as a non-native English speaker, and I have some really practical tips. So please stay. I will see you the next time. Thank you very much for watching.